In the last video, I mentioned that I would like to bring my internal data bus into my Arduino debugger so that I can uh, log and show values on the internal bus in addition to the external bus. And so I am starting to work on that. And what you're seeing here are really the, the three ICs I've added to my system. So down here, I've added a breadboard. And that breadboard, I'd added a NAND gate in a previous video. Now I've added three of the 74165s. And for now, I'm just using a pair of LSs and just a, a, an actual 74165, not an LS or HC or anything like that. This is an older chip. Uh, so I'm going to use those three. And I'm going to use the first two to grab the high data byte and the low data byte from the data bus. And uh, I'm going to use the, the third chip here just for additional expansion. Uh, as I look up at the Arduino, I only have one pin available here, and I have eight pins down here. And so, and, and these two pins, again, are, are used by this serial port, so I can't uh, leverage that if I want to also connect to the computer, I believe. So I have eight, nine ports total, and I'd like to be able to get these 16 data ports for now, and then maybe leave some room for some additional. So I'm going to use this chip here, which is a 74165. And if I pull up the data sheet for that quickly, uh, it is a, an 8-bit parallel load shift register. Uh, so basically, I'm going to be able to bring in those data lines into eight data lines into the first chip, for example. And then through serial, bring that data up here. So I'll have to basically pulse a clock and get that data pulled up. And if I look at the pinout of this real quickly, uh, this page here kind of gives me that information. Uh, so I, I look at the chip here, basically. I've got to add a VCC and a ground. I'm going to have A through H, which are the, the data bits that I want to read in parallel. So that would be, let's say, for example, my high byte of my internal data bus. And then on the other chip, it'd be the low byte. And then I'm going to have a clock signal. This is uh, kind of a shift register clock, so I'm calling it S clock. There's a signal that I can flip when I actually want it to load the values, the parallel values, into an internal register, or if I'm actually trying to read out. So the, this uh, SHLD allows me to basically configure whether or not it should be loading the parallel values, the 8 bits, or if it should be sending output out through my serial output. I then have the output, which is QH. There's a complementary version of, the, of that output called QH bar. I'm not going to use the QH bar. And then there's a clock inhibit. And uh, to kind of show how those are all going to come together, there's a timing diagram I can go down to here. And this is what I've been using as I've been kind of putting this together and starting to test it. So I have a clock signal. And that is going to be generated by the Arduino. So the Arduino, I'm going to, I'm going to create this clock. And initially, I need to have this clock inhibit line high. And I need to then take this load and drop it low and back up. And when it does that, that's when it's going to read those eight values. And then I'll bring the clock inhibit high. And of course, the load was just down for just a moment, so I'll bring that high again. And then as I start going through these clock pulses here, I can read the values that were brought in in the parallel uh, as they're shifted. And I'll read them, read them through QH. And I'll just pulse the clock, and I'll cycle through those. So I put together some initial code just to start to test this. I am in my Arduino monitoring uh, code here. This is the code that actually runs on the Arduino. And I temporarily just replaced all the normal stuff that it does on a, cl a clock tick, the normal CPU clock, uh, to just simply read serial, just so I could kind of show what this is looking like. And I can probably slide this over and make this a little bit bigger. Uh, so I have some variables up above, just two of them, one called serial data internal values, meaning my internal data bus, what's the values of, of those 16 bits. And then I also have another value that I can read uh, for these eight bits here. And I'm going to go out and write to that clock. I'm going to pull it low. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull that inhibit high. And then I'm going to 
go into this load and make it go low and then high, basically toggle it so that it does a load from the 8 bits into the internal register. And then once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and take away that inhibit of the clock. And then I'm just going to go through a quick loop. So I'm going to go through this uh, eight times since I have to shift in eight bits. And I shift in uh, basically, well, first of all, I drop my, my S clock low. And at the end of this, I'm going to take the S clock high. But in between that, so once I drop it low, I'm going to go out and do a digital read. And I'm going to read the serial data out of the first chip, which is my what I'm going to use as the high byte of my internal data bus. And then I have to shift it. So I'm going to read one bit in the loop. I'm going to shift it over to the proper position. Then I'm going to read the low byte, shift its value into the proper position, add the two, and store it into this. And so at the end of this loop, I should have in this variable the full value of these two, these two ICs together. And then I'm also grabbing the third one, very similar, except for I just have a lower byte, a single byte to work with. I pull that clock high, I repeat that eight times, and then I kick out of here. And now in my case, once I kick out of that, uh, I'm calling that from my on clock. This was an interrupt on my Arduino every time that the main processor clock ticks. I'm just telling it to go read the serial and then output the data in the control values. So show me uh, basically my, my two bytes or four characters in hex show me this byte so two characters in hex so it'll say data show me my data and you can see that over to the right I have some sample output that I've already been running and then fill in these placeholders with these values that should have been filled in when I did a read serial and then I print the line and I flush the serial and then I just repeat that and I, I return out at this point, so I'm not doing the rest of my normal debugging just because I want to test this. Something else I'm using is this little bus debug card. I put this together a while back, and I have a, a few of these. And these are coming to be really handy, it, really, really simple. All, all it is doing is allowing me to set on these dip switches a value that I want to put out onto the bus. And then I have a switch that allows me to enable or disable the transceiver that will put that out onto the bus. So I can just simply turn it off, no matter what the values are, or I can turn it on. And then I also have uh, to the right, just simply a couple bar graphs that let me read off of whatever I'm plugged into. So the left side is to put something out, the right side is to read something in. And, and these both come in handy at times. Usually I'm using one or the other, but sometimes I'll use both if I'm trying to set something and read a different thing off of the system. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the system on at this point. And you can see by the clock, I'm running a pretty slow clock right now. This is just running off my 555. But do you notice that over here to the right on the screen, uh, you can see that the output, I'm reading all Fs for data and all Fs, or basically all ones for data and control. And that's because I'm not outputting anything. I don't think I have this transceiver on. So if I turn the transceiver on, now I'm actually sending these values. And I see an FF01. And uh, I'm not, I don't have anything hooked up to the control, but I, I went through the same testing already, and that, that works in the same way. And if there's nothing plugged into these, it's not high or not, not pulled high or pulled low, uh, it basically sends across or reads it as, as a 1, so FF you see for the control. But now here on the left, if I want, I can just start toggling these. So if I want to start turning off some of these, and a good test would be for me to go through every single bit. So there I'm at zero is what it's reading. Uh, there I can read my one, my two, I'll jump up here. There's my uh, 80 or uh, 128, 80 in hex. And then I can con continue into the next byte and same thing. So I can just start flipping these and I can see that that is being reflected in that logger. Uh, and if I want, I can turn it off, and that's basically disconnected, and you can see that I'm now reading uh, all, all ones again. So this is a kind of a convenient way for me to just test this, play around with this, because initially I just had to make sure I had in my Arduino code, you know, the right, really the right timing based on this diagram over here. Uh, and, and what I ended up coming up with was this code here that seems to do it quite well. So that is running, and maybe what I could do is just kind of turn up the speed and, and see 
uh, you know, will this keep up at a faster speed? I don't know. Uh, that's maybe too fast to start. I'm going to go somewhere right about here. And I'm going to flip one of these and just see how well it's uh, keeping up. So let me just pull these all down to start. Okay, so there's my zero. And if I then pull up a one, okay, so that has no problem. So I'm just going to toggle the one back and forth as we go through this. And maybe I'll toggle also the last. So I've got both ends of what I'm reading. And let me go faster now. I'll take this up as fast as my 555 will go, which if I remember right was in about a 250 hertz range, meaning that this should be reading at about 120 uh, times per second. And so if I flip off, yeah, that, that's coming through instantly. So if I flip off this first bit, yeah, there's my eight. And I can just start toggling these on and you can kind of watch that as we go here. But as soon as I hit that switch, those changes are being reflected. So the Arduino is not having any problems keeping up with uh, this speed, which is the fastest I, I would probably want to debug and, and log things. So I think these these handy little ICs are going to do the job. These are inexpensive. Uh, so a pair of those, a pair of 165s, plus another one for an additional set of expansion in the future. And the nice thing with the uh, way I've hooked this up is it's really not that many wires that I have to now run. And so if I take a look up here, and you can kind of see this uh, wire I just have temporarily coming across here. Uh, I have, uh, what do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I've got six lines. Here's where I tapped them into the Arduino. So I've got an S clock I'm sending out. I've got this uh, load enable that I'm sending out. I have this clock inhibit that I'm sending out. And then I've, uh, I have my three lines. And uh, these first three I, I mentioned, these three here, uh, those are common to all three chips. So I just have to bring those down once. So that's three wires. And I, I jumper between all the chips on the same pins. And then each chip has its own distinct output for its serial out, and that's what these three uh, right here are. So that has allowed me to expand this pretty easily and quickly. If I wanted, I have three more pins available, two down here and one up here. And each pin allows me to do another 8 bits, basically. So I could add another 24 bits that I can capture and still leave all the rest of this Arduino alone and not mess with it. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and pause and what I need to do is get the rest of this connected. And so instead of pulling off of my just temporary card here, that's just letting me kind of debug things a little bit. I'm just going to quick bring over the 16 data lines just right off of the math coprocessor because I have everything nice and close there. And then I need to get uh, these this temporary six lines pulled out and I'll run some control wires around and uh, get those probably plugged into a soldered type of connection like that that uh, clicks into place. So I will be back momentarily with some of those updates. Okay, at this point I have finished connecting in these ICs that I was talking about. And so just to go through what I have here, I am pulling from the data around the math coprocessor into uh, these two chips. This one here I'm not doing anything with for the moment. I'll likely tie the inputs uh, to ground or something here just so they're not floating. Uh, all the signals going to my Arduino up here I have connected so I, I did one of these soldered headers that can pull out and I soldered all eight pins. I've got two available yet that I can still use uh, but the other six I have coming down here so again that goes back to let me pull up my diagram uh, these pins down here, so I have my uh, my shift clock that I'm running down into this lower piece here. And, I, and I, again, I use these little uh, pin connectors that I solder into just to hold those in better, especially since this is a thinner solid core than, than the rest of my 22 gauge. And this is just a Cat5 uh, cable that I stripped out. And so I've got this uh, load and the S clock coming in down here. Uh, from up above so that'd be these uh, first two pins here and then I've got the serial uh, coming out of the the next three and that is this one this QH the output of that 
Um, so each of these then on that pin have the same type of thing. And in this case, I soldered in a four pin connector. I'm only using one because this in the middle is the data. But again, I just kind of wanted a solid connector. You know, down here I had at least a couple pins. I wanted a couple pins holding this in. Uh, and then I have this other inhibit signal that's coming in up here. And then that is also run up top. So all of those have been run, tied down. Uh, I think we're sitting sitting good there. And now if I flip over to my Windows half of my debugger, I did update the code on the Arduino to now actually output the internal bus data in addition to the external bus data. And where that probably is important for me, at least for the moment, is like if I'm doing debugging of the math coprocessor. Because for the most part, the internal and external bus is going to match. And right now, the scenarios where it's not going to match is if I'm trying to communicate with the coprocessor. As I mentioned in a previous video, when I switched the coprocessor over to the internal bus instead of the external bus, I lost access from my debugger to get to that internal bus since this is sitting on the outside of these data transceivers. Um, but now I have all of these additional pieces of data being shifted in to my Arduino, and so I can show those. Uh, I, Like I said, I updated the code in the Arduino, and now I'm going to go in and, and pretend I'm trying to troubleshoot the math coprocessor. And so to start out, I'm going to put this on the oscillator, and I'm running a 10 megahertz into the system, 5 megahertz effective clock on the processor. Uh, so when I turn it on, I get my post beep, which you probably can't hear with, with my microphone. I get to the screen where I can start typing and doing things. And I can see here I can continue to type like I normally have. But now if I want to use the math coprocessor, I have a key set up so that if I hit it, it shows me what's being put in for the radius. And then this is a calculation of the area of a circle given that radius. So that's all working. I can continue typing. I can hit escape again and have it processed through the math coprocessor. But if that wasn't working, I would want to troubleshoot it. And so then now the nice thing is at this point, I can flip my clock source over to my 555. And I have it on manual clock, so it's just going to sit here for a minute. But while that's sitting here, I'm going to go ahead and connect to my Arduino. And I am, maybe before I connect, I'm going to choose my listing file that came out of my assembler. I am going to have it record, and then I'm going to hit connect. So at this point, I'm connected to my Arduino. I'm telling it I want to not only see it on the screen, but I want to record it out to a file. And now I'm going to go ahead and uh, flip on this clock, which I have it running pretty fast. So uh, what I notice is that it's probably more on the Windows form than anything. It generates a lot of events, and uh, sometimes it gets a little backed up, but they all come through. Sometimes I just have to be patient and let it finish processing, and you'll see some of that here. So at this point, if I come down here and look at what is it doing, you can see down below it's just bouncing back and forth. It's it's in this main loop. Now the processor reads ahead, so it's reading some of the upcoming instructions, uh, but it's not actually running down into that play sound. Obviously, otherwise we we would well it just isn't. It's it's in this main loop. Um, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and hit escape so that I can have it do something with the math coprocessor. And so I hit escape, and then we'll see that this is a little bit behind. And maybe what I can do is just uh, pause this for a second and just let it catch up. And you'll see it might take uh, oh, maybe half a minute or a minute for this to catch up. It just depends on how fast I'm running the clock and how much of a backlog it has. I might see if I can increase that performance. Obviously, I can turn down my clock if I want the screen to really keep up with what's going on live on the board. I think I might even add an option where I don't even show it to the screen. I just write it straight to a file, and then I think I could run really fast. Well, much faster than I am running today. I don't think I would get into the megahertz or anything, but I could at least run uh, into the, the kilohertz easily. Uh, and I am watching on the screen, and I can see it starting to print out that string of what is my radius. And maybe I will let this run, and uh, I can fast forward this in the video a little bit. So uh, I'm going to wait till this gets caught up and then pause for a second. Okay, so it's caught up, so I'm going to go ahead and resume it again.
it'll fall behind at this clock speed because I, I am running a pretty fast clock out of the 555, at least for all of this that's happening as far as processing. When it gets done with the radius and it goes to the next line, as soon as it starts printing on that line, I can stop because at that point it's already done the math calls. It's received the, the answer back from the coprocessor. And the reason I'm doing all this is I want to show a case where I can look up in the data and see the internal bus values where the external bus values isn't going to reflect that. Okay, so I can see I've got my 46 starting to get writ written out here. So I'm just going to pause here for a second again and let it get caught up. Okay, so that is now caught up. So if I, uh, if I turn it on just for a second and back off again, you'll see it'll just continue running. But I'm going to keep it paused. And let me uh, go ahead and tell it to stop recording. That'll get the file closed. And in Excel, I'm going to go to data and go get data from a wizard where I'm storing that. And I'm going to go ahead and import that. And so this was the data that it recorded that entire session. So I can see there are, oh, it looks like a little over 7,000 lines that got captured. And I can scan through this, and these columns here are through you. Let me pretty quickly kind of see what was going on. Where am I making a PPI call? Uh, and if I scroll down here, uh, there's some PPI calls, a bunch more PPI. PPI 1 would either be my speaker, which that wasn't being used, or the screen. So anytime I'm writing to that LCD, I'll see PPI, PPI 1 uh, traffic. And I'm going to go ahead and keep going down, and eventually I should see some math. That's anytime it's communicating with my math coprocessor. And now here you'll notice that on the external bus, we have all Fs because basically those transceivers got turned off when I'm using the math coprocessor because I'm on my internal bus. But now over to the right, I can see the values on the, uh, on the internal bus. So I can look previously at the external bus, and then as soon as it's switching over to the internal bus, I can come over here and look at the values. And you can see I can scroll down here and, and kind of see what's going on uh, as far as uh, the, the data that's being processed on the internal bus when my math coprocessor is active. Because previously I added logic that said if the math coprocessor is active, disable the data transceivers so that none of this external bus is coming in to cause uh, contention there. So that'll be a nice thing for troubleshooting now. I can look at both the internal and the external data bus in my Arduino. You know, as far as actually processing and getting the data from these chips, it, it's keeping up with that without any issue whatsoever. I, I'm pretty sure that my main bottleneck is still just simply getting the serial data to the computer and then the computer you know, actually rendering something, showing something in that Windows form. But that is getting in here uh, using this chip here, the 74165. And I'm basically using a pair of them right now. I have another one already set up, ready to be used. I just have to plug in whatever signals I want to capture. I'm capturing the eight individual data bits in parallel at, on one, basically one clock. And then I'm shifting each of those bits up through a single line up to that Arduino. Uh, and everything seems to be working well there. So this seems to be an inexpensive solution to get a lot more I.O. for that Arduino. Uh, so ho hopefully you found this interesting. I myself, I find this uh, debugging and, and stuff like this to be really helpful. And, and the more I'm, and maybe for me it's more helpful because I don't know the assembly and exactly how the processor works as well as a lot of people. So it just kind of helps me see what's going on, what's actually happening behind the scenes, what data is where and when. Uh, so hopefully uh, you found this uh, helpful or at least entertaining. So uh, more to come in the next video.